our faith professes that your son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Eugene, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings from Scripture. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction, but they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet their hope full of immortality, Chastised a little, they will be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed, in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptible incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. When he saw the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to them. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. 
Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The souls of the just are in the hands of God, and no torment shall touch them. They are in peace. These are the, the words that we just heard from our first reading from the Book of Wisdom, and they're fitting for us today because we mourn a loss, but we, we also have hope in eternal life. And we pray that Jean is in the hands of God, where no torment shall touch him, and that he is in peace. So Pat and uh, all the family, uh, you have your my prayers. And I've been thinking of you all week, and uh, the community is with you as well. Yesterday, we celebrated Veterans Day, and today we lay a veteran to rest. A real patriot, a real hero, an actual hero. Gene was the soldier who drove the lead tank into Tokyo after, after the end of World War II, after victory in Japan. He survived a suicide mission rescuing prisoners of war. And Decades later, he met, he would meet a, a Filipino lady that, after a conversation, they found out that he was one of the soldiers that rescued her from, from uh, Axis powers in Japan. There's, there's something that soldiers and saints have in common, and that is that they lived a life of sacrifice. And we can certainly see that in Gene's life. A marriage of 72 years takes a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work, a lot of prayer. And uh, without Pat even knowing, uh, Jean joined the church. And uh, uh, this is a funny story, you should ask him about it, but he just all of a sudden one day decided that he was going to be Catholic, and so he was. And, uh, and Jean, everybody here knows that he never knew a stranger, that uh, he served people around him, and... Uh, he said that he'd keep talking even if people stopped listening, but uh, he, he served our community, this part of the world, uh, in pretty much any way you can imagine. He was uh, an electrician, a plumber, a mechanic, a maintenance man. He, he was always there. He didn't have to ask Gene to be there for anything. He just was, and he was there to help. Didn't have to ask him for help, whether it came to snow removal or digging a basement or putting up telephone lines or doing woodworking for his children and grandchildren or basically fixing everything that ever broke here in the church, uh, he was doing it. And, uh, and despite having lost his eyesight over 50 years ago, there wasn't anything that Gene couldn't do. Or if, if there was something that he didn't know how to do, well, he taught himself how to do it. He would learn how. Uh, he was truly a, a jack of all trades. Um, and to the end, he was a man of sharp wit, a good sense of humor, and a sharp memory. He always had stories to tell. As, as a priest, uh, part of our job is to be with people, you know, in, in moments where not everybody gets to, to enter into those moments, in, uh, in, in people's weakest and most vulnerable moments. So you get to be with people and they're suffering. And Gene certainly did suffer uh, physically and emotionally, losing a son and a grandson. And, but the thing that I'll remember most about Gene, even when he was months in the hospital just uh, a couple months ago, I, he was suffering. That was much was obvious. And he had every right to complain. I certainly would have been. But he didn't. At least not that I knew of. And according to most people, 
that that is true. That he he never saw the point in complaining. I don't think, which is something that all of us could live by. And given all the wonderful things that we can say and remember about Gene, about this this good man, you know, it doesn't seem like 98 years is long enough to spend with a good man. And he went pretty suddenly, and in some ways I feel your pain. I never got to say goodbye to him. A lot of us didn't, so count yourself blessed by being able to be with him in his last moments. You know, I, I always come up short of a satisfactory answer to those those questions that we might have when it comes to the end of things and when it comes to suffering and, and losing loved ones. And I don't have answers to those questions. Those are the mysteries of life and death that we'll only know on the other side of eternity. But Jesus... He does have answers for us. His answer to suffering, which is a part of this life, his answer is the cross. His answer is an empty tomb on Easter Sunday. Jesus did a lot of great things here on this earth. He worked miracles and he preached to crowds of thousands of people. And it was none of those things that really convinced those same people that he was who he said he was, the Son of God. It was only when he was hanging from the cross, when he was completely helpless, that the soldier at the foot of the cross said, surely this man was the Son of God. And it was only in that moment when Jesus was at his weakest and at his most helpless that he did the most for us, that he, he redeemed us. He shed his blood for us and, and won eternal life for you and me. When I was little, my mother, well, she probably says this to me nowadays, I just don't listen, but uh, <laughs> when I was little, my mother would always say, uh, if I had something to complain about, she would always say, offer it up. And by that, she meant, be like Jesus on the cross, offer your suffering up for somebody else. And... In many ways, Gene did that for us. Uh, he showed us the face of Jesus on the cross, suffering. He showed us that by some mystery in God's plan for us, that we can, we can lay down our lives for somebody else. We can offer up our suffering without complaining for the good of someone else. And so Gene, like Jesus, taught us that sacrifice is worth it, that to Living for others is worth it. And offering your life for others is worth it. When Gene, when Gene was baptized, he was already given a taste of what eternal life is like, being made a, a child of God. He was given a share in the life of Jesus Christ. And today we pray that he is rejoicing in God's goodness and in God's love. That, that he's thanking God personally face to face, thanking God for his family and for his friends and for his faith, for all the people that helped him. Because now he has a better idea of all the people that he's touched throughout his life. Now he has a better idea of the people that have touched him. I have had the privilege of being Gene's pastor for the last six years, bringing to communion to him when he couldn't come to church and and I can tell you that he's been preparing his whole life to meet Jesus. He's been, been preparing his whole life to meet Jesus in the, the people that he's served, in the country that he's served, and in the life that he lived. In the, in the gospel passage that we just heard from St. Matthew's gospel, Jesus tells us, blessed are the meek, blessed are the poor in spirit, the righteous, Blessed are the merciful, the clean of heart, peacemakers. These are all qualities that Jesus desires in his followers. These are all requirements of us Christians. We have to be these things because these are the things that are needed to get to heaven. And Gene tried to live those qualities to the best of his ability. 
pretty much always say this at a, at a funeral mass, but if you desire to be close to Jesus, think of the image, or if you desire to be close to Jean, think of the image of Jesus holding a sheep in his arms or over his shoulders. Because Jean is that sheep, and Jesus is holding him. And the way to be closest to Jean once again is to be closest to Jesus, who holds Jean in his arms. And so if you've strayed away from Jesus in your own life, you can always come back, because Jesus is always waiting for you. And Jean is waiting for you now. Our faith always tells us that, that we must hope in the resurrection. That is our promise. And now we entrust our prayers for Gene and for his family and for his friends to the care of, of his merciful Father in heaven. We pray for Gene and, and we look forward to a day where, where our blind eyes are made clear, where there will be time for long conversations and stories to tell, where there will be always, always be fresh apple pie and peanut brittle. And every day will be a day that we can sing, Oh, what a beautiful morning. The book of Revelation tells us that God will wipe every tear from our eyes, and there will be no more death or mourning. Behold, says the Lord, I make all things new. So, rest in peace, Jean. We'll see you in the morning, God willing, if the crypt don't rise.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Eugene, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying may, might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful departed, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Remember your servant Eugene, whom you have called from this world to yourself, 
Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, For Catholics, receiving communion is not just a sign of fellowship between us, but it's also a sign of agreement in all that we profess to be true. And so for those Catholics who are prepared to receive communion and come forward to receive communion, those who are not Catholic, who are not prepared to receive communion, uh, can join us all in praying for the unity of all Christians one day.
let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Eugene may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> the uh, graveside services are immediately following Mass, uh, and then after that, all are invited to a luncheon prepared for uh, Gene and all, all that are present, so all are invited. Uh, prepared by the ladies of the parish in the, the parish hall. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Eugene in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Jean in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Our closing hymn is number 735 in this letter.